Hey everybody, Dalton Travis Gray here. Thank you for joining the Stones of Zion ministry page. Uh, I've been doing some broadcasts on the channel from my recording studio and uh, this is my my stage during uh, the beginning of the, the pandemic. Um, we were really bored and so we did a bunch of projects around the house and I made a, a fiber optic stage that is a uh, also plays movies and has speakers and all the music stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be doing a lot from this from this area um, as well. Um, today I want to off the cuff. I just feel led of the Holy Spirit to share with y'all about hearing God's voice. For yourself um, you know I've, I've shared a lot of words I, I do have a lot of visions and dreams I'm a dreamer of dreams a seer of visions I'm a seer in general uh, I have the gift of prophecy um, and uh, I love to move in the gift of healing that's my favorite thing to do is see God's people healed um, but I'm not over here on a pedestal claiming to be you know the the progenitor and having special access I, I do believe God gives each of us a measure of faith according to the scripture and those measures are different I, I, I know I have a lot of faith and uh, that comes with some responsibility and that that's why I'm stepping out and doing all of this stuff I, I'm called to and I want to help each and every one of you in a relationship with God and um, it, this all began with me sharing my testimony of being taken from here translated into the throne room of the Most High God and um, I was able to share that on Touching the Afterlife channel and now uh, Randy K will be premiering the same testimony uh, with some more stuff included uh, and I, I'm so honored to have done these things um, a lot of the prophecies I've received you know that they are not the most convenient things to hear um, and and I know that uh, I know that from from myself too. It's it's not the most convenient things to hear, but I've learned to discern God's voice from from false voices, and uh, I'm very careful, and I respect His voice. And what He shares uh, is is not always what we want to hear, um, but He shares so many beautiful things, and I want to get into some of that as well. Um, and I want to encourage you to go go hear those things for yourself. I'm going to give you some keys. I'm going to give you some a lot of scriptures, um, and these are all understandings that will will help you to hear God's voice for yourself. And as always, it's based on scripture. And I want to help you understand who you are, what you are, and where you are before I get into hearing God's voice. Um, it's important to know these things um, so we can begin to understand and grasp uh, the reality, the true reality that we live in. And so I'm, I'm going to pray uh, real quick and then I'm going to start sharing. Um, and this is just, just coming from the, the Spirit. I, I, looked up from, I looked up some scriptures uh, first and I have some ready. But when it comes to this message, this is just stuff that's been planted inside of me. And I, I want to I wanna give it to you. Uh, it's been, been freely given to me, and I want to freely give it to you. So in, in Jesus' name, I come before you. Great Father of spirits, we bless your holy name. You are eternal. You are the eternal soul. There is none before you, and there is none other than you, and there will be none after you. And we thank you that you have invited us to be with you. For that it is that that we desire above all else. And we thank you so much we thank you so much 
for your great love and your great peace and your great power that lives within us. I ask that you would break the blindness off of all my brothers and sisters that we all come into this world with. Supernaturally, I ask that you break these things, the scales off their eyes in Jesus' name, and that you anoint them by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you baptize them in your Holy Spirit so that they can see the kingdom, just as Yeshua said. I ask that, I ask that you would begin to speak to them from the deep places, from the still, small place that the troubles and cares of this life distract us from. I ask that you would help them and give them keys to understand where you are speaking to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so first off, in hearing God's voice, we have to understand what we are. So I'm going to start with that. Um, it's just important because to, to hear his voice, we must understand where he dwells, we must understand where we dwell, and we must understand how those connect. So, first off, what are we? We are a spirit, a soul, and a body. We are one being in three parts. Save that for later. I'm going to read a scripture about that. Okay, we got Genesis 2 7. So this be this begins in the beginning of the Bible. So this is this is not something that was foreign to our, our Hebrew fathers of the faith. Uh, this is something that all ancient cultures un knew and understood. Um, and and it's definitely what, what the Jews uh, that we call them the Jews, the Hebrews, uh, preserved in the most pure way in the ancient world. Uh, they were chosen to do that because they were chosen, the chosen line from Adam, uh, who, who obviously purely knew quite a bit of things. So let's read this. Genesis 2-7. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have body, soul, and spirit all in this one verse. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, that's the body, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The word there is spirit. And that was his own spirit. And then man became a living soul. So there you go. We have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Uh, we can define these things. Uh, you can look up the definitions just to save time. Uh, I I'm going to help you. Uh, Watchman Nee has the probably most comprehensive and real uh, books and, and works about this stuff. Uh, the, the body is very simple. We know what that is. It's the vehicle to which we, we, in which we move. Uh, it, is, it, is the, it is the vessel in which we are placed. Uh, God obviously values and honors the body uh, sacredly um, because he's going to resurrect our bodies physically and our bodies are going to be transformed into immortality physically into a higher dimensional uh, form and we're going to be with him as our individual selves so it's not some merge with the Borg thing where we're not us no God actually values our bodies and he created our bodies and he formed them individually for a reason so uh, that that's the body okay and then the soul if you go look this up the soul is comprised of the mind and the will and the emotions uh, the Bible calls it the heart of man um, and, and we got a lot of Bible verses about that that I'm going to read. Um, so, the, so the soul is is your being. The soul is who you are. Uh, we could we could compare the soul to to God the Father, who is invisible to us and who is the very being of who Jesus is. Uh, he he came in the flesh, uh, in in his Son. Uh, they they are one. Um, 
I, I know many people argue about these subjects. Uh, we, we can fix that really fast. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that now just because I know that probably triggers some people. Um, I'm just going to use one verse for this. It's all through the Bible. I might give you two. I'll give you two. But it, it's solved in one verse. So Isaiah, one of the, one of the most foremost of prophecies. So it starts to talk about Jesus. This is the most famous prophecy about Jesus, probably in the Old Testament. Uh, he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and, uh, and familiar with pain, like one whom people hide their faces. He was despised. We held him in low esteem, and he took upon, he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God. He was stricken by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed so that is the intro to this and then later on it goes and says who he is Actually, this is before this. This is all talking about Jesus. Uh, this is this is the, actually the beginning. So, it says, For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called. This is the child that gets born. So, there's no separating this at this point. This child gets born, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So I'm going to tie that into just one, one verse in the New Testament. It ties into most of the New Testament because the New Testament reveals the deity of Christ. But it says in the New Testament that Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So what, what is the Godhead that's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So that means Jesus is the full manifestation, incarnation of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's why Isaiah says he will be called Wonderful Counselor. That's the Holy Spirit. Mighty God. That's the Almighty One. Everlasting Father. That's why Jesus said, I and my Father are one. And if you've seen me, you've seen the Father and Prince of Peace. So that, that would be the Son of Man. Um, so I, I just wanted to clear that up real quick. I do believe Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. And I believe that although God has three pieces like we do, um, He is one being, just like we are, as we are made in His image. So that, that gets to the hearing God's voice thing. That really helps us understand. We, we are a three-part being with three parts that have different functions. Uh, they are all in different places uh, at once, and we are still one being. If, if my body went to sleep today and I was with the Lord, I would still be me, awaiting my body to be resurrected. So it is with the Lord. The Lord is always just the Lord. The Lord is always God. There's, there's, he doesn't see himself as separate from himself. A lot of us try to ascertain him that way, and that's okay. Um, but God is one. So we are three parts in one. All right, so I'm going to get to the function of all three uh, pieces and parts of us. Uh, our, our body, obviously, the vessel we live in. Our soul, the mind and will and the emotions. This is our being. This is what we want, what we do, what we, what we say. It's all coming from, from our being. But there is a part of us that's even deeper than that. And that's the part that God himself breathed into us. See, he formed our flesh and then he, he created us. He made us a living soul. But how did he do that? He breathed his own spirit of life, the divine spirit of life itself within us. And so each and every one of you, the spark, the, the force 
the the part of you that causes you to live is the very spirit that God placed within you so that you could live and it's a gift uh, life is a gift from the father of spirits from the father of life uh, he is life itself and so I'm gonna read a verse about about that um, just so you understand this goes into the next point of this this was what are we and we're gonna go into where are we here in a, I guess right now um, we're gonna go to Colossians 1 16 and 17 so this is speaking of Jesus again and it goes it goes directly back into the the Godhood and the deity of Jesus for by him all things were created that are in heaven in the spiritual realm and on earth in the physical realm visible and invisible whether thrones nor or dominions or principalities or powers the ancients would call that the gods uh, those that just means powerful spiritual beings God created all of them and put them in places of rulership um, there's a verse in the Old Testament that says he sits in the council of the gods and he judges among them so uh, that's a little G obviously and all that means is divine powerful being uh, so a being that is part of the eternal kingdom that has great authority that that's what that means um, but yes yeah, so all things were created that are in heaven and earth by him visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created through him and for him and he Jesus is before all things and in him all things consist so this gets to the second key to hearing God's voice is where are we it says right here in him all things consist this is where we get the doctrine of omnipresence so what part of God do we exist in we exist in his spirit uh, it is His Spirit that holds all things together, and it goes and says that next. So it He holds all things together by His Spirit. Uh, spirit is a is is definitely a part of your being. Uh, it's a very complex. It's 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 a part that's so extra dimensional and beyond this place that that we find it hard to understand it um, in our minds, and that is why the Bible says the things of the Spirit are foolishness to the carnal man nor can he understand them so so we are in God's spirit this entire cosmos every molecule everything here its entire existence is vibrating and existing and going forward in time within the spirit of God he created everything and in him all things consist so right now as I'm speaking this is a key to hearing God is realizing how close he is that's why I'm getting into this as I'm speaking by the spirit within me I am touching God himself because he is everywhere at all times and then the question just becomes how do I perceive him and how do I invite him in and how do I work with him and walk with him and how do I get to know him and, and that that's coming but I wanted to, to stress this with y'all that we are in we are in God I cannot find that one. It'll come up. So I just wanted to stress his omnipresence, that we are in him. Um, once you realize that you're in God's domain, there's also a scripture that, you know, if, if you go to the depths of Sheol, he is there. And if you go to the heights of heaven, he is there. Uh, he he, is, he every, is everywhere at all times. All things are in his reach. So, and that's by His Holy Spirit who permeates all things. 
if the Holy Spirit was not here, nothing would exist or could exist. And the Holy Spirit is not the restrainer, guys. Uh, the Holy the restrainer is a being that God created. Could be Michael. That's one of the most popular historical arguments. But no, the Holy Spirit cannot ever leave the cosmos. Not possible. Um, so next I'm going to get to how do we access God. First off, I want to say that when, when Jesus died on the cross, the veil of the temple was rent, and, and the veil was so thick and so strong, I, I can't even get into the science of it. This thing was woven together, and it was one of the thickest and most advanced pieces of fabric ever made. And when the earthquake happened, it split it, symbolizing the Holy of Holies not dwelling in any building made by man's hands and God called us his temple so Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within us so when we have his spirit within us we have the kingdom of heaven within us and we're gonna get to that before we get to that I'm gonna read some verses that separate parts of us um, one is the Spirit of God is sharper than two, any two-edged sword, dividing between the soul and the Spirit. So that verse right there shows there's a conflict within us between our soul and our spirit. Our spirit being the force that guides us and the force that makes us live. Obviously, this force comes from God when we're born again. And whenever we have that light, it, it fights with our soul within us because our soul wants what we want and what we've been trained to want and 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 our flesh is constantly be beckoning to our soul to guide us and these are some of the voices that we're gonna point out here in a minute uh, there, there are several voices that we can hear we can hear the voice of our own heart and let's get to that right now the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So the Lord there is already saying that man's heart is not capable of guiding him correctly and that the Lord searches our hearts and he gives us what we deserve based on our hearts. And another verse that King David penned was, that so a man thinketh in his heart he shall become that gets into the faith realm and we're going to get there too so i'm going to read another verse about the inward parts this is proverbs 20:27 20, the spirit of man is the candle of the lord searching all the inward parts of the of the belly so that that life that God breathed within us is is the light that shines on our true intentions and we cannot fool God and when we stand before him there will be no excuse because all things will will be made known and all things are known by him who gives us the very life we have so I went through the temple I went through the Spirit. Uh, all right, we're gonna we're gonna go into the first key and the biggest key to hearing God's voice. Matthew five eight. This is Jesus's famous sermon. He said, "Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God." So, number one, you have to be pure in heart. And, and it says even, if you Google this, I mean, on the first page, it says a better way to trans, you know, translate pure in heart, uh, if, if you're understanding it from their perspective, it means single and focused. So your heart must be purely upon desiring the Lord. And he, once again, as we just touched on, He sees your true intent. 
So if you're just curious and you want to know if he speaks and you ask him to speak to you, you're probably going to get silence. Sometimes he will. Um, there, there are sovereign moments uh, that he, he visits everyone. So I'm not limiting him. But I'm saying that if you're just a curious George, God doesn't really respect your curiosity. What he's looking at is, do you want me? Do you believe in me? Do you know that you're in me? That's why we went through, where are we? And what, what are we? Once you realize those things, it becomes much easier to, to, to sink into God's spirit uh, and to let him sink into you because you realize that you're in him and you realize that you're of him. And once you realize these things, that, the, your, that faith is very strong and you can begin to sense him. So, um, yes, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. And then, here is another one, 1 John 2.27. This is very powerful. And this is a key. This is something that no one can take away from you if you've received the Holy Spirit. And I'm, you'll know if you've received the Holy Spirit. It's, it's an experience. But you have received the Holy Spirit, and He lives within you. That's what the word says. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. And what He teaches is true. It is not a lie, nor can it be. So just as He has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. That's beautiful. The Holy Spirit is living within us. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven was, is within us. And he is the one who teaches us and bears witness of the truth. And the, the Bible goes and says there are three that bear record in heaven. And the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit bears record of the Father and the Son. And that they are one. All three of them. That they are one God. Um, so that is a powerful gift that you've been given. And no preacher on a podium can take that away from you. Uh, no one can tell you you can't hear the Holy Spirit. The Bible says right there that you can. So just clearing that up for any of you who feel condemned from a cessationist Baptist convention person, they don't believe in their official doctrine. They don't believe God speaks to people anymore. Um, that's a heresy, and, and I wouldn't want to be them on the day of judgment. It's okay to be ignorant and fall prey to deception. The Bible says my... My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So I'm, I'm clearing this deception up with you. I just read the verse right there that says, You have the Holy Spirit, and you can hear Him, and He will teach you the truth. And we begin to learn the truth through the Word of God. And next up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to that, okay? And this is a very loaded verse, okay? This is not a, this is not a small thing. The, the translation and the, the, the original wording really does count, especially on this one. Because uh, people try to use this to say that you can only get faith by reading the Bible, because that's all you get to hear. And that, that's not what this verse is saying at all. Um, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So, the word, word there is the rhema word and then there in the greek is also the the written word and then there's the spoken word that you hear in the moment the word there is rhema so it's a word that you're hearing right now and of course that primarily has to be judged by scripture because our scripture really is the most amazing compilation of books that has ever been given to mankind and it, it is definitely divine uh, go research that on your own it's amazing but faith comes by hearing a right now word of God so whether you're reading scripture whether the Holy Spirit is prodding you in your heart and speaking something to you uh, whether a homeless man speaks to you on the street and just so happen God is using his mouth to speak to you 
the lowliest of men. God can use anyone at any, t any time and anything to speak to you. And there's a verse about that. So we're going to go to that. Um, this one's really cool. This one's in Job. Okay, this is Job 33, 14. And this is all the way back then. And the Bible says God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. So let me clear that up with you too. Um, he has been, is, and always will be the same. We are changing because we're mortal and we're learning and growing. He is eternal and complete and full. And He is the beginning and the end. There, there isn't there isn't any change in him and that's the that is beautiful he is he is the rock unchanging um so so he's the same now as job was proclaiming then just want to get that across to you for god does speak now one way then another though no one perceives it so job is saying god is always speaking that's what he's trying to say and we're not hearing so, and it, and it says he, he's doing it in various means. So, hearing God's voice when you're taking baby steps, it's according to your faith. It says in, in Romans to, to prophesy according to your faith. Um, and, and although prophesying isn't necessarily the same as hearing God's voice, it's, it's speaking what he's saying and what you're seeing that he's saying. So, if you're driving down the road and you needed to see something from God... Sometimes he puts a street sign right in front of you that says the thing you needed to see. That's a type of hearing God's voice through signs. Okay? God speaks to us according to our faith. If that's all we believe he can do, then he's going to use whatever signs he needs to to get to us because that's how much he loves us. But I want to give you keys that you can hear him in your inward most parts and not just see outward signs that are just shadows of what he's saying to you within yourself even now. Um, that's, that's my desire um, as a prophetic minister is to help you to be able to hear him for yourself. And there are so many ways we can err here. This is where I need to get into the warning. So really there's four different voices. You know, you can hear, you can hear number one primarily the voice of your own heart and the voice of your own mind. You know, these are your own desires, your own ambitions, your own inspirations. Uh, Isaiah says that a false prophet, they prophesy by their own inspirations. So these are people who think that they're doing right and they're prophesying out of their own will, out of their own inspirations, that are their own creativity even. These are all gifts from God. But because they're speaking things that they're not hearing from God, they're speaking out of their own spirits, not His Spirit, they're falsely prophesying. And that's most of what you see in the prophetic ministry today. Um, these people are well-intended, very inspirational, um, but oftentimes it's, it's out of their own inspiration. So I'm warning you, you have to use the Word of God to divide between your soul and your spirit. These verses all connect with each other and they help us on our path to hearing Him clearly. So, first off, when you're hearing God, you need to understand that you're probably the loudest voice you hear. So the first thing you need to do is silence yourself. And I mean silence your mind. Uh, a lot of times you have to be in a silent environment. That's why a prayer closet is important. Or go, I like to go to the woods. That's my favorite. Um, but silence, number one. Number two, we all fight forces of darkness. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness and wicked rulers in high places and the governments of this world uh, who, who have the princes of peace rule, or princes of darkness ruling them. Um, so we're wrestling against spiritual forces always. So even after you've silenced yourself, you, you have other, spo other voices, other spirits trying to impose upon you wicked thoughts, thoughts of distraction, thoughts of hopelessness, thoughts of fear, 
you have to discern those spirits and you have to ask God for the power to discern those spirits and and it's by the spirit that you know the spirits it's it's actually a gift called discerning of spirits the the gift of discernment is not one of the gifts of the spirits uh, the the gifts the gift of discernment is something we naturally have as humans and we use our instincts and our in our natural intuitions to have discernment based and we use our knowledge base like a database to discern things that's that's a natural skill the the gift of the holy spirit is it's called discerning of spirits so we we are able to discern between a good spirit and a bad spirit so we must test the spirits how do we test the spirits the bible says that any spirit who does not confess that christ came in the flesh is this is not of god so um, a lot of times the best way to scare off an, an evil spirit is to just say I believe in Jesus of Nazareth he came of a virgin he died for my sins he rose again in three days after he visited the prison and freed the prisoners and he is alive and he is seated at the right hand of power which means equal power with God he is with God and he is alive and that is the first thing to ward off any false spirit and that is a that confession of faith is the most powerful tool you have against evil spirits they, they cannot stand that so once you've cleared the air and you should always clear the air by speaking the truth like that that is your sword is this the spirit of truth the spirit of the Word of God uh, is your sword and then once you've silenced yourself you've confessed you must believe and I'm gonna give you a few verses to help you understand how much you have a right to believe besides the ones I've already given here is Ephesians 3.16, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. So the Lord is feeding your inner man, your spirit man, your eternal self. He's feeding you. He's giving you his divine food and his divine nature. You're, you're partaking of God. And that, that should encourage you. Um, also, 2 Corinthians 4.16 Therefore we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, and that can be any circumstance you're in, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. God is feeding you and completing the work He's done in you. So you're silent at this point, you've kicked out the devil, and you're trying to get some faith so you can hear Him. Because how much faith you have is going to really determine the clarity in which you hear him unless he is just ready to speak loud to you and he he is sometimes sometimes it doesn't even matter how much faith you have because his faith in you puts a word in you and those are those are beautiful moments in our lives and a lot of people have had those um and colossians 3:10 and have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him so we're we're being made full of truth his truth which is him in his image we're being made in that um, here's another one second corinthians 318 but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the lord are being transformed into the same image as the lord we are made in his image from glory to glory just as from Lord from the Lord the Spirit so his spirit is transforming us uh, there's so many verses about this Psalm 51 6 behold you desire truth in the innermost being and in the hidden part you will make me know wisdom even David knew about this stuff so there's some to strengthen knowing that God is placing in you what you need and the wisdom you need and the strength you need so if you're silent you can begin to ascertain that strength 
in that wisdom because he is placing it in you as we speak right now. And, and being in touch with those things is what gives us the strength to face all of our circumstances in life. Oh, I'm tearing up. I, I do love the Lord a lot. Here's Job 32, 8, same thing. But it is a spirit in man and the spirit of Almighty that gives them understanding. So the Lord is giving us understanding by His Spirit and transforming our very nature. And here is where we get to knowing God's thoughts. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? So you're, the light within you reveals the truth of who you are. That light comes from God. But even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. There's your key. We already read a verse that the Holy Spirit was placed within us and that no man can teach you because you've been given the spirit of truth and he will guide you into all truth. So, and the kingdom of heaven is within you. So therefore, if you're wanting to know the thoughts of God, by all of those verses, if you do some simple math problems, he has placed himself within you. And by silencing yourself, kicking out the enemy and silencing the enemy, binding the enemy, and, and, and renouncing the enemy. A lot of us must do these things. We must renounce the devil and all his angels. They, they are tricky and they, they sneak in any way they can. But once we've done these things and we realize he's within us, the Lord himself, and we realize that the kingdom of God is within us, then we can begin to look within ourselves. And when we begin to see beyond ourselves, we see him. Because he is that light which gives us life. And the Bible supports that. I will go straight to that verse now. Oh man, this one's powerful. In him, Jesus, was life, and the life was the light of men. Woo! The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So, Jesus, who was before all things, was life. And the life that is within him is the light that we have as men, because we're made in his image. So, it, once we realize we have these things placed within us, and I'm not talking about people who aren't born again, don't get me wrong. Um, you're not a child of God until you confess that you are a subject of God. And then he, he makes you his child by bearing his spirit within you and bringing you to new life. So the, the, a lot of people say everyone's a child of God. That's, that's not true. Um, the Bible says he'll give us power to become sons of God. And it's by His Spirit that we're transformed into those things. A son of God is, is somebody that's so righteous and holy and powerful and true. And are we that yet? We're headed there. But we humbly go in that direction and work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So, Jesus Christ is the light that causes us born-again believers to live. And... My point in all of this is to say once we realize that He is within us and we are within Him, just as His prayer, I pray that they would be one in me 
as I am one in you, Father. He said that in the garden before he went and died for us. So that it's a very emphasis, very great emphasis on that prayer. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit about some promises about hearing God's voice directly. And says, all right, 2 Hebrews 3.15, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Uh, this was before they had a Bible. So how do you think they were hearing his voice? Obviously, they were listening to Moses, but God invited them all up into the mountain, just as he is inviting us into himself, even this day by the sacrifice of his son. Um, so repent that's the message there but do not harden your hearts if you hear his voice if you if you feel that prodding within yourself and you actually hear a, a, a soft this is one of the most beautiful things you this is the beginning of your hearing of God and discerning his voice a lot of times you will hear I love you I'm your father you are my son you are my daughter I have loved you with everlasting love you will hear him say those things to you. And those are the, the moments of, of excitement and, and honestly divine ecstasy and joy when you hear him say those things. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, here's John eight forty seven, and this is kind of a warning verse too. This is a warning verse to Christians who have a form of godliness but deny his power, which means denying his act of Holy Spirit, his voice speaking to us. Uh, it says from such flee. You got cessation as friends. If they don't want the Holy Spirit, just get away from them. Go go hang out with people who have the Holy Spirit. Um, they've pushed him away. They've quenched him, and they've blasphemed him. And I'm not going to get into too much there. But if you declare uh, that the living eternal Spirit is not moving, and He's not breathing, and He's not among us, and we're not in Him, just like all these verses I read, you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said that's unforgivable. So if, if you are in the sound of my voice and you just heard me say that, you better stop it right now. Just, just accept your ignorance. That's actually a beautiful place to be before God is saying, you know what, God, I don't understand everything about your spirit, but your word says I wouldn't because the carnal man can't understand the things of the spirit. Please help me out. It, you can even tell God, hey, this spiritual stuff kind of scares me. Can you help me out to understand these things? I don't want to be a wacko. You know, uh, the Lord gives us a sound mind. He doesn't give us a wacko mind in all this stuff. Uh, people of the world will always think it's crazy. But if you have the real Holy Spirit, you have a sound mind. And you have peace about you. And you have self-control. All the fruit of the Spirit. And you, and you still hear His voice. But anyways, John eight forty seven. Whoever belongs to God, hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Please let that sink in. There's another verse in the red letters that I'm about to get to that says the same exact thing. And the red letters mean Jesus is speaking them. So if you're not hearing from God, you are not of God. Let me make that clear. Okay? Now I'm not saying you have to have the most powerful divine thus saith the Lord voice every single day. A lot of people do have that. I, I hear the Lord daily and I've, I've made a practice of it. I've, I've made it my sole desire to, to walk with Him. Now, do I fail as a human? Yes. Good Lord, I'm trying to walk away from all failures. Um, but you don't have to hear Him in the most profound way but if you're not seeing him move in your life, you're not seeing road signs, if that's where your faith is, if you're not seeing road signs that say, I'm here, I'm seeing you, I know, I know what you need to hear today, I'm going to put it right in front of your path. I'm going to, I'm going to, you're going to turn straight to the scripture that speaks to you today. If you're not experiencing an active move of his voice in your life, um, you, need, you do need to question how close you are to him. And I say that in all respect. And I say that with a challenge to you to just get closer to him. I'm not judging anyone. Uh, but I'm just saying he does speak. You can hear him. I gave you a lot of verses already. And I'm going to give you more. 
Um, this one's awesome. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. So that's saying Jesus created everything. I wonder who Jesus is if he created everything. Hmm, let me think about it. Oh, wait, he's God. This is something the Holy Spirit put on me the other day. Just, this is just a nugget for you. Take it or leave it. I was speaking to the Lord, uh, just letting him speak to me. I silence my mind so he can speak to me. I try to silence myself all the time, even though I'm a high-strung person. I've made a practice of it. But the other day, the Holy Spirit asked me a lot of questions, just in the same manner Jesus asked questions. He said, Whenever I spoke the word to create all things, Whose lips did I speak them through? Whoa! Jesus. Jesus is the body in which God inhabits fully. Uh, whoa, that's a big one. Um, it is through the, the lips of Jesus that God the Father, the eternal soul, spoke the word and created all things, which is, which is exactly what that says. Here's Deuteronomy 4.12. Then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sound of words, but saw no form. There was only a voice. So, and even in the Old Testament, God, God by His Holy Spirit, who is all present, he, he was speaking to and through the prophets and to His people. Uh, he always has been. John 5.14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Psalm 5.3, this one's beautiful. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. This is about talking to him. This is the Lord speaking. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me void, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. That's a wonderful principle. When you begin to hear God and you're actually hearing from Him and it's not your own inspiration, not your own get-rich-quick schemes, not your own, I'm going to have the biggest blessing of my life this year, you can have faith in those things and by so a man thinketh in his heart he shall become. So the power of faith is strong. Um, but you should you seek to align your faith with God's will for your life, not your will for your life. Uh, and those two end up melding together very beautifully as we, as we grow in Him. Uh, so, basically, if you, if you begin to hear God's voice and He gives you real words, you can watch them come to pass. It, it's like the sun going up and down. And I, I'm speaking this so confidently because I see it. Uh, when you don't have to go somewhere and proclaim that you're a prophet or have the gift of prophecy. If the Lord speaks something to you, you could say it in the most silent and simple way uh, and be very subtle about it. And you can say it, and whether that person likes it or not, it will happen because He spoke it. And that's actually the beauty of it. You don't have to let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. If you're saying what He has said, um, and it's a sovereign word, not a conditional word or not just a spirit impressing something upon you. That's different. If it's the Lord speaking and you speak it, you're speaking His word. And therefore the whole universe is, is subject to it. And that's the power of His word. But He does, doesn't just hand it out. It's a sacred thing. And then I'm going to close this out with this verse and then just just give some commentary about faith 
So, this was Jesus speaking. He was speaking to the Pharisees that had surrounded him, and they were accusing him of doing false miracles, and they, they wanted a, a reason to stone him for blasphemy. And this was right before the final straw, whenever Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. As he was saying, I am the I am. I am the great I am. Whoa, watch out. That's Jesus. Um, so, um, he said to the Pharisees, I have done all these works by the power of the Holy Spirit, and you still don't believe me. He said, because you are not of me. So you see all these things. You see the evidence of the Holy Spirit in my life. You see the love from me. You see me healing people. You see me doing all these things, and you still don't believe me because you're not of me. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and they know me, and I know them and they follow me. There's a big one too. They follow me. Not all will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. So, the beauty there is that we can be confident, just like it said in John, that those who hear his voice are of him and those who do not hear his voice are not of him. So we can be confident. Jesus said in the red letters to the Pharisees, which there's plenty of them today. There's, I mentioned the Baptist convention and I love Baptists. There's plenty of Baptists who do hear God's voice, let me be clear, but they're not following their, their conventional doctrine because their conventional doctrine that you can go read it, I have, it states that God only does isolated miracles and that he does, not, he does not interact with people like he always has. It's a heresy. Jesus said here, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and I know them and they follow me. So if you're his sheep, you can stand on that scripture and you can, sometimes the Lord wants to see you have faith and tenacity and persistence and purity and focus and strength and what you what you seek him for so he's gonna make you he's gonna make you work for it not that anything is given by works but he's gonna see if your faith is true he's gonna test you if you want to hear his voice in a powerful way then you better be willing to seek him in a powerful way and just to share with you when I was younger and I began hearing his voice and discerning his voice which is a long journey I seeked him so hard, I would have pain within my soul and my body. I wanted to hear him so bad because I didn't have a dad around and I needed him. I needed God. And that hole in my heart is what opened the door for him to come in because he is near to the brokenhearted. And I was poor in spirit and I was pure of heart. I had like three of the Beatitudes, okay? and. And he came and he began to reveal himself to me. One of the first words I got from him was that he is Yahweh. And that, I, I was blown away. I ran around my house. I was like, oh, I finally heard from God. He's Yahweh. You know, um, you know that, that was awesome. Uh, another, one of the first, in the first couple years, I started hearing from him a lot. Okay. But this is one of the most treasured experiences I had. I was confused if Jesus was separate from God or, or how that worked, the Trinity. And I asked God, I said, are, is Jesus separate from you? Or is, you know, are you him or what? It, and I, you know what I got back from, from God when I asked that question with a pure heart? And I was really wanting it. I was like, God, please let me know. Please let me know. I want to be right on this. I want to be true. I, my desire was to be true. I love the truth. And guess what I got back? I got I am he and uh whoa okay all right that was God he was saying that him and Jesus are one I am in him and he is in me and it is through Jesus that God created all things Jesus is God is Jesus I got that revelation it wasn't just by the scripture the scripture confirmed that more and more it still does to this day in the verses I read but I got that word from God and I'm, I'm encouraging you Go get some words from God. 
and then test them. Because if you're hearing from the same God, it says that we see in part and we prophesy in part. So there's there's a glass, there's a there's a cloudy glass sometimes when we're seeing things of the Spirit. Because we're not made perfect yet in our flesh and our soul is being transformed. Um, but I will say this, you know, by your faith you can see purely and you can have the mind of Christ. So if you just lay down your own thoughts and say, give me your thoughts, he can put those thoughts within you that are his thoughts and he can show you revelations because the revelation is already existing within you. The Holy Spirit has all knowledge, all wisdom, all truth, all power, all goodness, all love, all hope, all peace, all of those things are literally living within you. And it might just be a little fire right now, but that fire can grow and, and envelop you and envelop your life and envelop all of those around you if you ask him to live in you to that degree. Um, yeah, that one makes me emotional. Um, that lives within you. And so if you want to know the truth about a matter, understand that you're in him and he is in you. And if you're worried if you're not in him and he is not in you, I pray in Jesus' name that even now you would give them the powerful witness by your Holy Spirit that they are sealed in you and that they have the promise of eternal life because they have come to you and they have repented and they have laid down their sin, sins before you and they have asked you to change them. And I ask that you would come upon them now and fill them with your Holy Spirit and give them divine strength to come and seek you as Moses did and as David did. Give them that powerful strength to wrestle you like Jacob did, to ascertain you like Solomon did. So guys, I hope this was helpful to you. Um, I went long because I, I really wanted to, to dive into some scriptures and to give you some of the, the revelations that I've been given about these things. Um, and it, it's all with the purpose to help you grow in your relationship with God. Um, and I can't stress to you enough the importance of Scripture in all of this. Um, we hear God's voice within us, but to, to, to begin to understand Him, we do need to renew our mind. And, and it's, our mind is a database. And if, if our database is darkened with all of this nasty stuff that's in the world, how are we going to see Him in a pure way? So we need to fill our minds with the Scriptures so that when we do hear Him, we, we have... We have a, a board, a chalkboard of truth to, to that light can shine on and say, okay, this is what this means, and, and this is how I understand this. This is how John saw it, so I'm hearing the same thing as John did, so I must be hearing from the same Spirit. That You, you need to fill yourself with the Word of God. Um, but but I, I want to share one last thing about the Word. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God and the Word was with God and then it says Jesus is the Word made flesh uh, it also says in the Bible in Psalms 138 that God himself Yahweh Elohim just for all you people who think they're separate it says he exalted his word above even his own name and then why do you think it calls Jesus the Word made flesh and says that he's the name above all names because in Psalms it says God put his word above his own name it's because God lifts himself to the highest place because God is in the business of telling people he's God and that's Jesus if we want to see God fully manifested the guy who walked with Adam and Eve in the garden the guy who wrestled with Jacob the guy who saw Abraham face to face the guy who was in the fiery furnace the guy who appeared to all the prophets and they knew that that's Jesus okay and it called him God every time but I just want to say the word a lot of people confuse this the Bible is a compilation of books and those books are all the Word of God but then the New Testament says that not all the books in the world could contain all the things that Christ did don't you think the things that Christ did are also the Word of God made flesh because he's the one doing them yes so this co compilation of books they're all divine and they're all the word of God 100% so I'm not even one second negating that but I'm saying that this 
compilation of books can't contain even a tiny portion of the books that are written in heaven about God and about life and about all things. So the reason why John said in the beginning was the word, the Bible wasn't in the beginning. Jesus was in the beginning. And he is the word. So it is he is the living word. So this compilation of books is just a book that contains what portion of that he gave us in written form. But the word of God is a spirit. And that spirit was made flesh in Jesus Christ. Came in the flesh. I don't want to say it was made flesh. Jesus was born of a virgin so he could show that he didn't need seed because he's not created. So he came to the flesh. So I'm, I'm just explaining to you the word of God is the spirit of God, is the spirit of Christ. And the, the Bible contains that spirit in a perfect way. But understand that what you're seeking is so large and so vast and so marvelous and so majestic that those 66 books, they contain enough to go to him and enough to study for lifetimes. But when it comes to seeking him, you're not seeking the book as in the substance. You're seeking the spirit that wrote the book. You're seeking the God that wrote the book, that spoke through the prophets. Um, and this is my last point. I know I'm going so long. So, the Bible is a collection of books. This is just to close the whole thing. This is the stamp on the end. The Bible is a collection of books, divinely written, divinely inspired, by a bunch of men who made a lot of mistakes, but guess what they all had in common? They all came from ordinary circumstances, did extraordinary things, and guess what they all did? They all heard from God. So I'm going to leave you with that. If you want to know God, go know Him like all of our forefathers. And do it in the same way, because He's the same. Go to Him like David did. Even go to him like Solomon did. Ask him for wisdom. Go to him like Jacob did and said, I want your blessing. Give it to me. I'm nothing without you. I'm not stopping until you bless me. You know, all of these are examples of, of men like you and me. But guess what? They all, they all heard from God. All of them. Even the, the nasty kings and the, the bad prophets and, uh, you know, the evil nations. They heard from God too. He spoke to them too. So, the Bible is a book about God speaking um, and, and there's no coincidence that the Word was before all things because he's, he's always speaking in some ways one day, in another way another day. Are you going to listen? Learn to listen to Him. Silence yourself. Silence the enemy. And hear His marvelous divine voice and gain His wisdom and His truth and hear, hear from His love that He's placed within you. Thank you so much for listening, guys. I bless you in the name of Jesus. May you be baptized in the Holy Spirit that you could see the kingdom of God, just as Jesus said. Amen. Have a good one, guys. Your spirit flows.